The future is already here. Ask your eye care. Was served on the battlefield. He was a backup man, but you would want him there in a time of crisis for injured soldiers. Tonight, his story of sacrifice and why this local family doctor almost lost everything while serving his country. It isn't much, but this small plastic sign tells the tale of a hero welcomed home. It feels wonderful. For 20 years, Dr. Robert Greer has practiced medicine out of this house tucked along US-1 in Lake Park. But in February, his livelihood was on the line when Greer, a longtime Navy reservist, was called to active duty. Without partners to pick up his patient load, his medical business he had spent years building was sure to fall apart. The first thing I did, my brother is a physician. He practices in Alaska. And so I called him to see if I could convince him to come down and cover my practice. And then called other physicians who are semi-retired and so forth to see if I could possibly get them to cover. None of those things really worked out. Greer says, by the grace of God, his assignment wasn't Iraq, rather the Naval Hospital in Jacksonville, just four hours north. When I got to Jacksonville, the commanding officer said, is there any way that we can help you to you know, not lose your practice at home? And I said, yes, how about if I work 12-hour shifts, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you give me Thursday and Friday off. So after serving his country for five days, Greer would make the long drive home to serve his patients on his two days off. It was pretty difficult. Today, the sign celebrates Dr. Greer is home and seeing patients full-time once again. He credits his wife, who runs his office, and her staff for keeping his business afloat. And when friends say to him, You know, this is an awful lot of obligation in terms of time and effort. And my expression is that freedom isn't free. And I would venture that if you ask any reservist who's mobilized, the vast majority will look you in the eye and say, you know, this is my country. This is an important part of me being an American. Dr. Greer says he couldn't have done it without help from an excellent nurse practitioner and a few local physicians who stepped in to help out in his absence. Once again, he has been released from active duty, but he can be called up again at any time. Mm. Shannon, thank you. That was a great story. And thanks, Dr. Greer. We wanted to know what you think about the situation in Iraq. In tonight's News Channel 5 Fast Track poll, we asked this question. How long do you think it will be until Iraq has a stable democratic government? You see the answers. 36% answered at least four years. 14% thought three years. 21% said two years. Just 4% thought one year. And 23% said they thought there would never be a stable democratic government in Iraq. The survey has a margin of error of just over 4%. As I said earlier, there's going to be a whole lot of people to thank tonight, and I certainly hope I don't leave anybody out. Matter of fact, just one second here. With the help of my staff and with the help of uh, Mrs. Greer, I think I've got just about everybody here. But y'all want to say a couple of things about this, this football team. Uh, and you know what? It really doesn't seem that long ago that we were playing, does it? It really doesn't. And, and I, I, at first, I thought that this might be too late to have an awards night. We've always had it in December, but uh, I kind of like this. It brings back some great memories. First of all, this group of seniors played on only the second undefeated junior varsity team in the school history. Um, and when I... <laughs> Coach Park, you want to take this thing? I'm not sure if I'm standing in the wrong place where that's just going to do that every once in a while. But it does, and I jumped. Don't, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll jump too, probably. We'll do CPR. CPR. <laughs> I got a lot of doctors in the house. That's, that's one good thing about Benjamin. <laughs> You always got doctors around. Um, but only the second group, and when I think back on that group, uh, and uh, Coach Wagenseller had, had that team, I can still remember, uh, Robbie and, and Chris, and some of you guys can remember this, I said, Coach, here's our sleds, here's our dummies, 
Here's all of our little other toys that you can use, our blaster, and you can use any of that stuff that you want to. He never used any of it. They warmed up, they stretched, and they tackled, and they blocked for two and a half straight hours. And I shook my head and I said, golly, he's going to kill those kids. They're not going to want to play. They're going to be awful. I think he had five running plays and two pass plays. Is that about right? Each way. Each way. It's total seven. Yeah, total seven. And they went undefeated. With how many guys? How many guys do you have here, Riles? Uh, 15, 14? 15, I think. 15 and some days, 14. Yeah. And we played teams with 30, 35, 40, 40 kids, and they went undefeated. And boy, I'll tell you what, I was licking my chops. I said, there's something about that group that's very special. And I'll tell you how special they were. As juniors and seniors, this senior group, seven of them, as juniors and seniors, they came in second in the most wins in two seasons. The most wins happened twice. 1978, 1979, we won 21 ball games in two years. 1993 and 1994, we won 21 ball games. This group won 20 ball games in two years. That's a great accomplishment. Two years, won 20 ball games. So uh, before we even begin thanking anybody, let's thank these seven seniors with a round of applause. Thank you. I can see it already, Doc. It's going to be a long-winded night. I hope you got a T120 on it, whatever, whatever you got going there. Okay, with the help of Mrs. Greer, um, so several people I'd like to thank, and I'm not going to do it in any particular order, and I hope and pray we don't leave anybody out. And I'm just going to read off names and give some recognition here because I think it's so important that you people that were working behind the scenes get at least some recognition here tonight. That's first. Put that on a timer and maybe we can know when it's coming up next time. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, um, I want to start with the, uh, the program. Wasn't that a great program we had this year? Yeah. And, time to have the, can y'all hear me if I don't use this? Yeah. If I just shut this off, here, yes, yes, that dude. Let's try it. I think I'm loud enough. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Marty and Eric Atkins, first of all, for their uh, contributions to put that program together. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Rena Good for the printing of it. I don't think Rena's here tonight or Robbie, but I want to thank them. Uh, Marisol and uh, Kelly, all your Tremendous help in preseason and putting together that program. That is a lot of hours, people. All of this stuff is. But it started way back last summer, and thank you so much. Um, also with that program, Paula Romer, Kathy Kerbin, Roseanne Reinhardt, thank you for all your help on that. The uh, concession stand. None of us that are on the sidelines knows what goes on down that corner with concessions, but believe me, that's another labor of love because you're not getting a chance to watch all of the ball game. You're back there selling popcorn and, and sodas and whatever, but uh, we had a lot of uh, great workers in there. Roseanne was uh, there a lot. Uh, Reinhardt, I saw her. Paula Romer, the Arnett family, uh, Linda Dennis, Kathy Kerbin, Marisol Hart, <coughs> Kelly Greer, Sherry Camret, and Denise M McNabo. Thank you so much. You know, it was the sophomores, mom, the sophomore mothers, the sophomore moms that bought all the blooms for all those games. I said, my golly, Palm Beach County's got to be out of orange and blue balloon by now. <laughs> I am telling you, thank you so much. It just adds so much flair to the uh, to the festivities of the day. Thank you, sophomore mothers. Decorations, and this goes from last spring to this fall and to tonight. Decorations by Cindy Riley and Roseanne Reinhardt, Ann Rohde, uh, Miranda Washington, the Arnett, uh, uh, sophomore moms again, uh, Paula Romer, Denise McNabo, Linda Dennis, Kathy Kerbin, Marisol, and Kelly Greer. Thank you so much for all the decorations. I'll tell you, isn't this great? You look around and everything just 
Just right, isn't it? Uh, by the way, guys, those pictures are for you. Leave the footballs. We're going to box those up and maybe use those again next year. Those are great. Uh, and uh, that was an idea that Mrs. Perry, Coach Perry's wife, uh, found. Where was it, Kelly? She found those? Had them all. Had them all. Uh, we'll thank her in a moment. One of my most treasured things of the night were the uh, notebooks, guys. They're just put one up here. If uh, dads, moms, after you, you pry these away from your son's hand, take a look at these. And next year, senior moms and dads, take a look at them again. Ten years down the road, pull them out. I'm going to tell you something. These really will mean a lot to you someday. And I'd like to thank um, Kathy Kerbin, Sidney Riley, Kelly Greer, Randall Washington, Kathleen Devine, Roseanne Reinhardt, Linda Dennis, Paula Romer, Sherry Cameron, and Paul Lawler. Where's Paul? I need your name on here. The only player. <laughs> Seriously, during final week, during final week when a lot of things have gone on, Paul scanned all the pictures that are in here and saved us a whole bunch of money by doing that. That was a lot of time, Paul. Thanks a lot. But thank you, parents, too, for all the time you put into these. I know that's a, that's a big chore. Throughout the season, there were a lot of little gifts. There's some big gifts here tonight for the coaching staff, for the uh, kids throughout the year. Uh, Cindy Riley, Paula Romer, we're saying these names over and over again. Rhonda uh, Arnett, and Kelly Greer, Roseanne Reinhardt, Linda Dennis, Kathy Kerbin, Randall Washington, Kathleen Devine, and again, Mrs. Perry for finding those little footballs. Uh, but uh, we really, really appreciate those things. Let's give all of these people a round of applause. I know, I know there were a lot of you guys in the background helping out with those things. I know we didn't mention a lot of the uh, ladies' names, but uh, I know the guys are back there too. As a matter of fact, there's one I'd like to uh, uh, thank tonight, and Kelly was so kind in remembering and reminding me of this. Um, we got a, uh, just, just, it's just an acknowledgement, but we're going to make it a Team Spirit Award from all of us to Mr. Wilson. Team Spirit Award!
y'all, y'all pitched in. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take somebody to spearhead that. And Kelly, we just want you to know how much we appreciate you. Doc, how much we appreciate you. Uh, when I get calling my staff up here, I'm going to have to call this guy back up again. Wasn't it nice having him on the sidelines, knowing that he was there? Parents is not a good job. Robert, Dr. Robert and Kelly Greer for devoted service to the Benjamin School Football Team 2000 Honorary Buccaneers. thank publicly tonight a lot of those people, even though they may not be here, I want them to know, I want you to know how much I appreciate the behind the scenes things that go on. I've just mentioned a lot of it here, but when you actually go into the game, you better have four or five good water boys. Yes. In our case, girls and boys. And uh, we have a couple little thank yous tonight for them. Is Taylor Smith here? Oh, I yeah. saw Taylor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, these guys work hard, too. Where's Chris Holmes? Is he here tonight? Chris! Come on up here, buddy. Did everyone see the uh, picture of uh, Kerbin and Rouse, Devin, Bobo? It looks like I got him clipped. Is that Adam? Uh, but you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you something. Those are future Buccaneers right there. They'll never forget that experience. Is Lindsey Sachs here? Yes. This may be the hardest worker I had all year long. Lindsey, come on up. Buddy. <laughs> Lindsey, thank you so much. <laughs> kids and he was uh, with us uh, golly two or three years now it won't be long before he'll be playing he looked big enough to play this year but uh, we really appreciate it and I'm not going to miss some of those kids but those were the kids that were there the most often I really really appreciate that you know my chain crew I had different people on and off and I know I pulled uh, 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 Joe Devine out of the stands one time I said Joe Joe I mean the game the, the kickoff threatened me made it Referees are going, we can't start till we have a chain crew. I said, Joe, Joe, come here. He didn't know what, he thought Mike was hurt or something. I said, I need you to work the chains. I've never done it before, coach. I said, Joe, it's easy. Just get over there and do it. <laughs> After the game, I said, I said, coach, I'll do it anytime. That was fun. Let's <laughs> see the house. Right over the line. You know? But the, 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 the chain crew, the people that worked at, I really appreciate that. Uh, Frank Taylor. How about Frank, the voice of the bus, huh? next year because he will be in Connecticut working. Couldn't be here tonight because he's in Connecticut. He got transferred uh, with Pratt Whitney. But we already have signed up a voice of the Bucks for next year. Mr. Don Smith will be doing voice of the Bucks next year. Who would like to thank Dr. Cook and his staff. Dr. Cook, uh, he bows out of these things. He's in and out before I even know a lot of times. I've got to go look for him sometimes. Uh, he, he, he just kind of sits back on the sidelines and he along with Dr. Greer and some of the other doctors that came. Again, it's got to be a warm and good feeling for you parents to know that some of the best doctors in the 
I'm not talking about the area. These guys are some of the best in the whole state, maybe the whole country, are right on our sidelines. And I, I know that you've got to uh, uh, have a good feeling about that. And let's never take for granted the job and work that Dave Bailey does. some games 
And you be real proud of our special teams. Thanks a lot, Coach. Some of the guys were asking me tonight, saying, Coach, was he very good? I said, he was good. He was good. He knows the game. He's been a student of the game. Even when he played, he was a student of the game. He always knew the line calls to make. He could do things that other players couldn't do because of his intuitiveness about the game. And I was just so glad when I was able to get him come to our staff or to my staff a couple of years ago. And um, plus... He's my right-hand man. He's the one who keeps me straight. If it wasn't for Coach, I'd really be lost. But uh, Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Little girl walked by his head full of <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, 
couple of things I'm going to miss, believe it or not, this coming year is like B and Chris Salivar, B, because I'm always saying, where in the heck is B? B, where are you? And when I turn around, I just look for the biggest group of girls. <laughs> Chris, you know, I go to bed at nighttime saying somebody get Chris out the locker room. I'm out of the locker room. Where is so those are a few little things I'm going to miss about you. I give you guys a lot of static about that, but great kids. Okay. Uh, found this in a locker. Andre, love one of your games. <laughs> Thanks both of you guys. I cleaned your lockers out. I made a anchor rope out of your sweatband. <laughs> uh, something a little strange happened this year. Uh, we had a, this is kind of touchy, but we had a player actually come out of the closet this year. <laughs> and it was Romer Worsi. <laughs> came out because in study hall he was running his mouth and I locked him in the closet. <laughs> um, Jay, where's Bluebird at? Jay is a real Hollywood. There he is, Mr. Hollywood. See, he's back there propped by the pool. <laughs> Tides, you know, high socks. Well, you left your pants. <laughs> Just one comment for Barrett. Barrett, if you're going to be tackled, you're allowed to move. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh it's not a Red. Red. Red was my special teams captain this year on a 9 and 3 football team and on the football field wrestling during practice after games 0 and 10. <laughs> Kraft, for Scrap. Nice tackle on that last playoff game. Good. Thank you. Hey, oh, sorry, Ryan. That wasn't you. That was you. <laughs> um, Eric? Where's Eric? Oh, Daddy. This, uh, Scotty's called and wanted to sponsor their. <laughs> Devin? Don't mind you wearing a cross or stuff like that or whatever you like, but you know, leave them these in your locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Devine and Mike Wilson, can y'all come up here real quick? <laughs> Mike Wilson, where are you? Okay, the little problem I have with these two guys is. They're both Mike's, and when I'm doing special teams, I want you guys to work on something this year, because I can't tell you apart. Corey? Where's Corey? Are these your football? Oh, oh. Take them too long. Get out there. Get out there by the pools. Everybody can see you. I think it's a See everybody see Nate there? That was me at 13. <laughs> Joey, some kid I don't even know him. Saw him in the hallway. He said you're one of the football coaches. I said yes. He goes, tell Joey I want his number. That's all I have. Oh. 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 Um, that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you, you know, we have the DJ on the sideline stuff, and this year I didn't notice that during the music, Kurt Dooley was by far the best dancer 
with the dance team and the cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> you got Nina Munchkar dance is really good. <laughs> and uh, just one more. Where's Parsons? Parsons, stand up. <laughs> How many fingers is that? Great. <laughs> you know, Coach Parks is great at this kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. I hope everyone took it that way. But all during the year, he was calling these kids Bibidu and. <laughs> I wasn't going to run down through my roster here and see if you can figure out who he's talking about. Well, this first one's pretty easy to be. I mean, that's all that you guys. Then we have Hollywood. Then we have uh, Doc Jr. Then we have um, Red. A.W., that's pretty easy. Uh, Blondie. Gibson. Gibson. <laughs> Gibson. <laughs> uh, Bibidoo. Tom Dooley. Uh, Chris Pratt. Mustang Sally. Chris <laughs> 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 Parsons, Ross Parsons, <laughs> uh, Chuck Berry. Where's Chuck Berry at? Are you going to do a little Chuck Berry for us tonight? Uh, zebra, Snowman, Rodeo, um, Camelot, That's, uh, Andy Kaufman. Where's he at? There he is. Um, I think that's about it. <laughs> so it isn't always all work, is it? All right. I believe the way I'm going to do this tonight is to uh, call the guys up here by grade level and have them. Uh, receive their letter or uh, award tonight, and um, if you would please just hold your applause till I get all the way through. I'll call these kids up as the ones receiving gifts from their coach. From his uh, coach, I'll be uh, calling the next kid up here. But I do want to say something uh, about each kid. I didn't see Sam Cohen here tonight. Is, is he here? These are the ninth graders. I didn't see Sam tonight. I, I wish he would have been here because I would have liked to said some, some things about him. We're really looking uh, uh, forward to having Sam for a couple more years. So let's uh, go down to uh, Robert Gim Gimson. Robert uh, was one of the two eighth graders that played with the varsity team last spring. And I knew last spring that we were going to get a very, very fine football player. Don't be fooled by his size. He's one of those guys that just knows no fear. Uh, this year he had three tackles, eight rushes for 21 yards. You're watching that last uh, game that we won, the uh, Dave Christian game. He uh, really ran hard and uh, did a nice job for us. He's receiving his uh, first year letter. Sean Nelson. Sean. Saw Sean working on a baseball field yesterday. Maybe he uh, maybe worked too hard. <laughs> C.J. Rohde, another ninth grader. Well, you don't have very many ninth graders to step up to the plate like C.J. did this year. He was 39 of 45 on PATs. That includes bat snaps. That includes block uh, PATs. 39 of 45 for ninth graders. That's, that's not too bad. He was 2 of 4 on field goals. He had 45 points as a ninth grader, fourth best individual season by a kicker. He had punts uh, that uh, averaged 32.5 yards. He had four tackles and was honorable mention all area. CJ, nice job this year as a ninth grader, son. Nathan Rich. You know, here's a kid that uh, I'm going to tell you something. People are going to be surprised in three or four years how good this kid is going to be. Three years, he's going four years. 
But uh, Nate works hard at it. He tried hard. He didn't know what he wanted to come up for. Come up with a big boy for a while. He played JV ball. He said to me, Coach, he said, I'm not sure I belong up here. I said, give it a try. After about three practices, he said, Lee was not that tough. <laughs> worked hard and, and pushed those varsity kids those last couple of weeks when they came up. I'm going around that way and they made me see it. <laughs> Good job, mate. Brody Schumann. Brody Schumann was another kid that came up, uh, had an opportunity to work with Brody this summer in, in summer uh, math program, and I kept saying, you going to play football? I said, yeah, coach, I'm going to play football. I kept hoping that he would. If you ever saw this kid's legs, He'd say, boy, he's gonna be he's, he's gonna be able to move a truck someday. But uh, he ended up coming out for JV football. He worked all summer long, ran on the football field all summer long, uh, had his sister out there timing him, uh, dad pushing him, uh, was up on the basketball court, it was 95 degrees out. Uh, did a great job for us, and he's another one that wasn't quite sure, didn't know quite what to expect. When he stepped up there, he sure stepped up to the plate real well. We're looking forward to some uh, great things from Brody. All the ninth graders in. I didn't miss any ninth graders, did I? Let's go on to the tenth grade. Number two, Jonathan Cart earning his second year letter. You know, I can still remember talking to Marisol several years back when Jonathan was in the middle school, and she said, my son's never going to play football. <laughs> My son's never going to play football. Now, I don't know what turned him on. I do know this. Coach Wilson, JV coach, one time said, this kid may have the best set of hands he's ever seen. And uh, he does. He has some great, great hands. And I, I can remember the game out of Glade's day. He was right at the first down markers, ran his pattern absolutely correctly. B fires the ball in there. Bump, bump his chest and we, we had to punt the ball. He came over the sideline. I said, Jay, you've got to catch those, son. He put his head down. And I knew the wheels were spinning. I don't think he ever dropped another one after that that was right in his hand. Nice job, Jay. For <laughs> Receptions for 207 yards, one touchdown. Uh, he also threw for a touchdown, a 40 yard, 45 yard touchdown. He had uh, 12 tackles this year. He'll be playing a lot of football next year. Corey Damon. Corey is earning his second letter. And uh, here's another kid. Don't ever be fooled by this kid's size. He works as hard in the weight room as anybody I've ever seen. He is a stout young man. He loves the game. He, he was learning the game this year, picked it up real well. He watched, again, that uh, game against Dave Christian. Um, maybe we should have been running him a little bit more, Coach. He had 19 yards on six carries, and uh, we're looking forward to a lot of, lot of playing time from David. Good job, Corey. <laughs> Another second year award winner, uh, Mike Devine. <laughs> Mike's a real special guy. You know, uh, not very many people take the game as seriously as Mike does. He's, he's very serious about the game. He works out all the time. He works hard in the summertime. Uh, a real leader. We're looking for some great leadership from him. And um, just a fine, outstanding Young man, you could not ask for a better kid on the field. It's always yes sir, no sir. Even if he's doing something right, we tell him he's doing it wrong, he'll do it wrong just to please us. A great kid uh, to coach on the field. Looking uh, for a lot uh, from Mike in the future. Sean McNabo, earning his second year award. I'm gonna tell you something. We said this many times during the season. We had to get together last spring or over the summer and say this kid was going to be our starting tight end for most of the season. <laughs> would never would have said, no way. <laughs> I'll tell you something. He came in and he became a ball player this year. He really did a fantastic job. 
We did not skip a beat when we had a couple of kids uh, get injured, a couple of position changes we had to make. Uh, Sean stepped in, did a heck of a job, and uh, he'll just get better and better as we go. Yeah. Joe's earning his second varsity letter. Joe rushed 14 times this year. His passing was 15 for 25 with one touchdown, 211 yards. I'm sorry, three touchdowns. Uh, but you know, when we started, <laughs> when we started the season, that's all right. We started the season, this is our man. This is our man at quarterback. Wasn't quite ready, wasn't quite seasoned. We made a couple of changes, and all of a sudden, Joey started fading into the, the woodwork. I said, wait a minute, this is too good of an athlete to be sitting on the sidelines. And I think everyone will remember where he came into his zones up at John Carroll, interception on a third down, big third down play up there at John Carroll. Turned that ball game around, and uh, we found a couple of spots for this young man. So uh, we we'll look for some great things from Joey for next year. Justin Parsons, <laughs> earning his second year award. I know it had to be discouraging and disappointing for Justin this year. Uh, I'll never forget the first stinger that he got that I realized he was getting the stingers in the, in the neck and shoulder, arm was going numb. Uh, and I went out and I said, Justin, how long has this been going on? He said, Coach, about three weeks. He said, three weeks? Why didn't you tell me? But that's the kind of kid he is. He's going to play through pain. He's going to play uh, for you no matter what. And, you know, he's a coach's dream. He was told finally by the doctors, that's it. He still never missed a practice. Never missed a practice after the doctor said that was it for the season. Lifted weights every day. And I know that kid's looking forward to next year and hopefully this thing is over with and he'll have a great future for the Benjamin School. <laughs> Earning his second year award. Got some great sophomores coming up here. Some kids are really counting on. This is another one of those kids. You know, I, I, I'll never forget, I think what epitomizes Bobby in, in playing is the uh, Miami Curly game when we got Curry to fumble into the end zone, and who's on the ball but a second team defensive lineman, Bobby Peters. That's the kind of kid he was. He was not a starter, didn't play a whole lot in the second half, but when he turned him loose in the second half, he had a little extra speed, those fresh legs, he was always around the football. We're looking for a lot of plays down from Bobby in the future. Barrett's earning his first uh, football letter. <clears throat> first year letterman, he had eight receptions for 148 yards. Eight receptions for 148 yards. There's a lot of pros that would like to be able to say that. He, he scored two touchdowns, so once out of every four times he caught the ball, he scored. He also had 13 tackles on special teams and on uh, defense. And Probably, maybe, and I, where's Andre? Can he beat you? He can't beat me, coach. On any given day, he was the best. I'll be saying that about me, about Andre, and about Robbie, too. But, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to tell you something. I think, I wonder if he would have got the t-shirt. But I'm going to tell you something about Barrett right now. You know, uh, I think everyone will remember Barrett that touchdown he scored against Glades Day. Got behind the secondary as a, as a tight end, got behind the secondary, caught the ball. That's, was that your first or second catch of the year, Barrett? Second. Second catch of the year in a big game like a Glades Day game for a touchdown. I'll tell you what, we got a prize right there. This kid's going to be super. Is that all the 10th graders? Did I miss any 10th graders? All right, we're going to move to the 11th graders now. Earning his first year uh, award, first year letter for football, Sean Berry. Ooh. I saw this kid 
playing basketball last year, and I've known Sean for a long time and helped him in math and, and uh, tutored him and had him in my summer programs. And um, I saw him playing basketball, and I said, son, you ever think about playing football? He says, I think I'm too small, coach. I said, give it a try. Try it out this spring. If you don't like it, think you're too small, give it up. But give it a try. What have we got to lose in four weeks? And I'll tell you what. This young man is one of the nicest young men I've ever had the pleasure of coaching. And this guy here is going to play some football someday. I'm going to tell you, he's got great hands. He's got great hands. Didn't play a lot this year. He had six tackles. That's all he had. But I'll remember the one down at Zion Lutheran. Where that kid, and that kid started running all over us. So if y'all remember that game, we thought that was never going to end as coach. I remember that. You may not even remember that game. <laughs> but, but I'll never forget, Sean, that kid was making a run around the right end, and it was like uh, third or fourth, I can't remember the down, but Sean broke down just like we taught him in practice, took him on on the numbers, made the tackle, pancaked him, and I'll tell you what, there wasn't a happier young man on the field, there wasn't a happier coach on the sideline. <laughs> Ryan Kraft, earning his first year letter award as a uh, football member. Ryan, um, again, it had to be a disappointing and discouraging year for Ryan. We don't know when it happened, whether it was the first day of football, or the last day of baseball, or exactly when he broke his foot. First day of football, but I'm going to tell you something. It was a very, very unique break. Uh, it was a very painful break. We didn't know it was broke. He didn't know it was broke. The doctors didn't know it was broke. And here he is out there trying to play on a broken foot for about three weeks. Finally, we said, Ryan, you've got to get an MRI. We've got to know what's going on. He went, well, the rest was history. He was told by the doctor that would probably be it for the season. And I said, Doc, it can't be. I mean, those, those kids heal so fast. It was a very, very unique break. Uh, one that I hope that he's over. I'm sure that he is. He's going to have a great baseball season this year and a better football season next year. I just believe it. This young man was another one of those kids that came out to practice every day. Coach, is there anything I can do for you? Can I move dummies for you? Coach, worked in the weight room. Coach, can I do this? On the sidelines, he helped us. And I'll tell you what, that is a coach's dream. <laughs> Also gave Coach Parks a hard time, but I'm going to tell you something, this, this young man is going to be playing a lot of football. <laughs> Kevin Turner, second year, letter winner. Man, I'm so hard. 49 tackles, he had two sacks, and he had an interception. <laughs> I can still remember when Devin came up, uh, Golly, he wasn't too much bigger than what he was in that picture as a water boy. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, guys, he showed me more guts those first couple of years by getting down to his linemen. He could have very easily said, Coach, I'm a fullback. Coach, I want to be a back. He was that kind of size. <laughs> we said, Devin, we need linemen. Didn't even hesitate. Went right down with the line, has been there ever since. He goes against the biggest guys, it does not matter. He played inside linebacker, outside linebacker. He played a little bit of defensive end. Uh, he's on a lot of special teams. He played uh, backup center, backup guard. You're going to see this young man probably a two-way player next year, and a good one. <laughs> By the way, Devin had 40, Paul I say 49 tackles, two sacks? Yes, I did. Paul Lawler. Got a phone going off here. Uh, this young man has had some shoulder problems. We still didn't know whether he was over them or not. And once again, I said, Paul, why don't you give it a try? He was very hesitant. Not because he didn't want to play football, just because those are, those are painful injuries when those shoulders start coming in and out. He had surgery last year. We weren't sure whether he'd be able to play again. He did come out, and boy, I'll tell you what, it was one of the best surprises and nicest things that happened to our team when Paul Lawler came out. He anchored down that outside linebacker. He was a, 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 a very heady, smart kid, learned the defense very well, probably knew it better than I did, uh, made some great tackles, and uh, 
I think he's hooked on football now. So we're looking for a lot of, a lot of great playing time for Paul. Andy Lieberman, first year letter winner. Hey, I was kidding Andy there just a little bit. Because I know if I look up, there's one kid that you can joke with, and that's Andy. He can take a joke. But I'm going to tell you something. He can also hit with the best. If you want to hear a great success story, and for you guys, Justin and Ryan, they're going to come back off of injuries and, and, and play next year. But I don't think anybody, now I've never coached a kid that's come off the success and the story that Andy came off of. Andy had a severe leg problem. One leg was shorter than the other leg. And you know what that does to an athlete. He had trouble running. He loved to play. He loved to play uh, uh, basketball, baseball, football. And was told by doctors, if you want to continue playing, if you want to walk, son, you've got to have an operation. Those same doctors told him, just because you do have that operation, don't expect that you'll be playing sports ever again. Those same doctors told him, and if you do walk, if you are able to run, rule out football. You'll never be able to play football again. Well, he proved them all wrong. He's a living testament to what it is to, to have perseverance, a lot of guts. My hat goes off to that kid. He came out hurt every day to play. And he was a stalwart on that uh, offensive line. Justin Romer. Earning his second year award winner as a, uh, a junior. Justin established himself as a Benjamin starter long before this season. Last year, uh, if I recall, he was uh, he received a uh, he received a football last year. The only sophomore. The only sophomore to receive a uh, football last year. We knew that this kid had a lot of potential. He is one of those kind of guys that will back down from nobody, doesn't give a quarter, doesn't ask a quarter. <laughs> he will play with anybody, anytime, and he will play with as much intensity as anybody that I've ever coached. He played both ways for us. He started both ways. He was a uh, punter, a backup punter, a kickoff person. Uh, He's a, a, a soccer person, uh, a goalie on soccer, uh, just a very tough, tough young man. And uh, when it comes down to next year, his senior year, you're going to be looking at a kid that we're going to probably be, be revolving around as a Benjamin football team. This kid's going to be in the center of our plans. Justin had 84 tackles this year and uh, did, a, did a great job. I have some other things to say about him a little later. Good job, Justin. <laughs> You know, every once in a while you find a kid comes into the school, you're never really too sure how they're going to fit in. This kid fit in in the Benjamin School and on the football team immediately. Um, cannot say enough nice things about Andre, one of the nicest kids I've ever had the pleasure of coaching, one of the fastest kids we've ever had played at Benjamin. He, as I've said many times during the year, he can take a hit and keep on hitting. I don't know why. He took some hits this year. I didn't think he would get up from. Not only got up, but ran back to the huddle and said, give me the ball again, coach. I'm telling you what, we, it was really a real fine, a real diamond to get this kid into Benjamin School. And we're going to be looking for him uh, toting the ball next year. He says, coach, it's 1,500 yards next year. How I many touchdowns? 25. 25. Okay, you heard it here. I just got to say one more thing. I got a couple of real vivid uh, plays that Andre was involved in. Uh, playing both ways, you know, it doesn't really happen very often that he can outrun the opposition like he did. But y'all, I'm sure, can still remember the uh, John Carroll game where he busted that one up the middle and just left those kids. 
And then what about the Glades Day game, huh? Was that a turning point for us? Is that all the juniors? Oh, wait, got Mike Wilson. Mike Wilson. Wilson. I could echo and ditto everything I said about Andre, about Michael. I'll go one step further, though. Michael came several times to the school before he was actually let in. And there was some hesitancy on Coach or Mr. Selvig's uh, part. Uh, I'm not really sure. You know, it's awful late. You think you'll fit in? You had done a summer reading and all this stuff, academic. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you something. I said, do the bit. Do the bit. Well, the nicest young man you'll ever run across. And speaking of Glade's Day, did he have a night? Oh, yes, he did he have a night against Glade's Day? They could not get outside of him. They could not get inside of him. How many tackles do you have, Andre, uh, uh, Michael? At six sacks, that was a Benjamin school record in itself. Six sacks that night, a single game record of six sacks. Uh, great job. I think he had 13 or 14 tackles on the night. Great job. A area team. Nice job, Mike. Really appreciate you. Well, that brings us to our, I didn't miss anybody, did I? Seniors. That brings us to our seven seniors, and uh, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to call them up, basically, give them their letter, give them their award. We're going to pass out their football, uh, the coach's award, uh, in just a little bit. But if I could just have them come up here, uh, receive their Letter. I'd like to have that happen first, okay? So let's bring up Brandon Arnett getting his second year award. I've got some other things going on, that's why we're doing it this way. <laughs> Kurt Dooley, come on up, buddy. Okay, we're, we're giving these kids a lot of things, but uh, uh, we do have a video for each senior of the season. We do have their scrapbook. We have their letter. Uh, what else they get here? A plaque. Golly. Man, I mean, I get it. See what you guys got to do next year. Now you got to go eight and two again to get this kind of stuff. No problem. No problem. I like that. That's it. Let's have uh, Robbie Greer come up getting his third <laughs> Signs, right, crossroad, left, point St. George, oh, that's your address. <laughs> We're also uh, autographing this football for Bash. This is for Bash. Once some of you guys reach deep in those pockets, we bought the, the, the football has always been one of the biggest items at Bash. Um, I won't tell you how much it goes for. I won't scare some of you out of here. But uh, I won't tell you. Going to have all these kids' name on there. It's going to say uh, nine and three, Benjamin uh, District Champions. We have won how many district games in a row now? Eight. 
nine, ten, I don't know. We haven't lost in two years, I know that, in district ball game. So this is going to be a hot item on the auction list that night. That's what they're doing up here, signing that thing. Coaches, make sure you get your uh, signatures on there. All right, now we have some special awards to give tonight, and I'm going to have the first award given by Coach Parks, who will give out the special teams award. Okay, first, um, I'd like to mention two people that Coach already mentioned, and for me, they are so important as to everyone, and that's uh, Dave Bailey and Doc Greer. Uh, if the kid gets hurt on the sideline, you know, it's an offensive coach has to replace one spot, a defensive coach one spot. If a kid gets hurt on the sideline, for me, sometimes i got to replace six different teams with that kid. So with Dave Bailey and Doc Greer keeping me posted and getting them ready and back in and stuff, uh, you, you just can't imagine what that's like to, to be able to have people like that on the sideline. Because it's, it's hard enough just getting 11 kids out on the field. Uh, the special team award, um, there's a lot of kids that could have won this this year. Um, name a couple of kids. Devin Kerbin, I mean, played the battle on every special team. He made a lot of tackles. My special team captain, Ryan Rowley. I mean, big hits, big plays, a lot of stuff. Ninth grader, Rody, did some nice kicks, uh, big kicks. You know, he's, he's a good player. Dooley went down the middle, busted the middle up on kickoff teams. Um, just always down there, in on every play. Washington, Pat Hunter, I mean, down there on kickoffs, I mean, returning balls, I mean, just some, some really big plays. But Robbie Greer is the person who's going to get this award, and uh, Robbie is, um, geez, he was a hat hunter on the teams, he was the return man on kickoff, he was the return man on punts, he called blocks on extra points, he, I mean, he was on every team out there, I mean, that's after he catches passes, you know, and plays deep, and, and he was just a real, a real stable kid on the special teams this year, and could always count on him. You know, like if he came up, coach, I need a blow, take me off the kickoff team, Robbie, big, big team. He goes, okay, I'm in, I'm in, you know, and just uh, could always count on him to be on those teams and do a great job. And Robbie, uh, we have a plaque for y'all, so we have the golden ghost for you. kids to vote on a couple of, of awards and the coaches do not get a vote if it's a close vote the coaches will either decide the vote or they will uh, co it or whatever but they don't get an actual vote in this and I think it's pretty important to allow these kids to make some decisions they they pick their captains they they uh, vote on these two awards and they take it seriously, and it means a lot. And I think it means a lot to the kids that receive these because they know that they've been awarded these not by the coaches, not by the parents, but by their own peers that are out there every day sweating with them. Tonight, the most improved player award goes to two kids. Voted by the players, Jonathan McCart and Ryan Riley. Sometimes most improved player award is something that, you know, the kids look down upon and they don't at this team, but some teams do, and I don't think that's the case. We look for improvement every day. Our motto every day, when I get a chance to say it, let's be better today than we were yesterday. Let's work harder today 
than we did yesterday. And we try to do that throughout the season. And I know that these kids will do that as their own personal goal every day. And we will become better and better as a football team and a better and better playoff team as the years go on. And as I said, the last two years, these kids have uh, done a great job in improving every day. Most valuable. Most valuable is chosen by the players. Once again, it was so close. These two kids almost had every vote. Two kids. Number one, Brandon Arnett, and number 44, Kirk Newell. accomplishments and say a little bit about each kid, I'd like to thank Coach Perry, who does the painting, all the, uh, puts all these little letters on here. I am telling you, it takes some time just to get them straight. <laughs> it takes some time, and uh, thank you so much, Coach, for the time. I'm going to read out the kid's name, give the accomplishments, and uh, a few things about the kid, and then uh, I'd like to have the kid come forward as, as, as a college name, and uh, then with the position coach that coached that kid, please present him his football. Okay. First coach's award of the evening goes to, all right, coach, get your act together here. Here it goes. First of the night, goes to a junior. He rushed 137 times for 1,055 yards. He had 13 touchdowns. He received the ball 14 times for 166 yards and a touchdown. He had 51 tackles on defense and one interception. His scoring of 14 touchdowns ties the number 18 all-time best for Benjamin football player. He still has another year to go. His 7.7 yard per carry average ranks him fourth, right now fourth, among all Benjamin rushers of all time. He's our 16th all-time uh, rushing person with 1,055 yards. 
Honorable mention all area, Andre Washington. Another underclassman had 84 tackles, three for sacks. He ranks now 22nd on the career total of tackles. He had one interception. He punted the ball. He blocked on offense. He tackled on defense. He played special teams. He was honorable mention all area. Honorable mention all state. Received a football last year. He received his second one, Justin Romer. We have one more underclassman. It came down to actual minutes played. This kid probably played the most of anybody on the team. The most of anybody on the team. Starting tackle on offense, defensive end on defense. He had 56 tackles. People did not like to run his side of the, of the field. He had two sacks. He was honorable mention all area, Mike Devine. Hey, so, ask him what I call him. Ask him what I call him. Now call him truly divine. <laughs> Now for seniors, and uh, this isn't going to be real easy to get through because I'm going to miss these seven guys. You know, when we get together for our first practice every year, we meet at 9 o'clock Monday morning, the day we can start football in room number four. And I have my hour spiel that I go through the kids about summer regulations and rules, our training rules, what I expected them as football players, what I expected them as students, what I expected them as uh, gentlemen. I go through our season, our goals, then I dismiss everybody. Coaches, trainers, underclassmen, and I always keep the seniors in the room. We sit down, and I sit down with them, and eyeball to eyeball, we go to each person's likes and dislikes, where we need to improve either our character as a football player, whatever's said in that room stays in that room. But I'll, I'm going to tell you one thing that came out of that room. These seven guys, after they finished talking to each other, talking to me, their likes, their dislikes, strengths, weaknesses, said, Coach, we're going to win. I said, that's good enough for me. And when they did, nine and three, one of the best seasons we've ever posted, but it was the way they won. They won with character. They won with dignity. I never had a problem, not one problem, with any of these seniors. Greatest kids of coach in the world. First one I'm going to give out tonight. Day before, no, the Saturday before the Monday that we opened up. For some reason, 
and I don't do this, but maybe three times out of the entire year, I walk into the Lucas restaurant <laughs> down on PGA Boulevard. And who's in there? But Ryan Riley. And I said, Ryan, coming up for football Monday? Uh, I don't know, coach. You got a job, you got this, you got